So if you're anything like me, you've often wondered why are there so many Canadians on YouTube and why are they so successful? Well, today I want to address some of those issues and go into detail. But first, we need to start by talking about Canada, where these YouTubers are from, and its history. So let's begin. Canada was founded in 1779 by black metal immigrants Oystein Arseth and Varg Vikernes from Denmark and surrounding areas. Its first prime minister, Soren Kierkegaard, achieved independence from the British a decade later. Little fighting resulted from the War of Independence, after the British decided the place was too cold to be worth their time. Canada would become known for almost nothing over the next 300 years of human history, with the majority of mankind not even recognizing its existence in any legal form. But by 1994, Canada had achieved entry into the World Trade Organization, in large part due to its possession of maple syrup and Avril Lavigne. Many people who paid attention were initially puzzled by this mysterious domain. But despite its syrupy punk output, the land would remain shrouded in mystery until the later days of the web. You may not know this, but Canada was an authoritarian dictatorship until recent memory with the democratic election of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. With his election, slavery, usury, and other forms of eerie were abolished, though many Canadians still resent him for his role in the events of the film Die Hard, though the events of that are too graphic to discuss on YouTube. The Canadian national anthem, O oh Canada, was initially composed in the same year as the launch of Matt Grunigan's famous show The Simpsons and was inspired by its main character's catchphrase. But this has since been removed for something more gender neutral and acceptable to fans of Family Guy. As with many things, the development of the web allowed us to learn a lot about many places we would otherwise not have, and this was no different with Canada. With the beginnings of YouTube, Canadians began uploading themselves to the web for the entire world to see, and it's safe to say the world has never forgotten. Now that we know something about Canada, let's move on to its YouTubers and get to know them. First, we turn to Canada's most famous sport, or so you would think, its ice hockey YouTubers. Sadly, there are none. While you might be expecting a discussion of great Canadian hockey players, this is in fact a myth and Canadians do not play ice hockey any more than anyone else with a modicum of self-respect. This myth of Canadian ice hockey dominance has been used in the past by colonialist and racist ideologies to marginalize Canadians for centuries. Its existence and prominence in the modern era is largely attributed to well-known racist Bobby Orr. Well, if Canadians aren't good at ice hockey, what are they good at? Well, let's look. First, we examine one of Canada's proudest athletes, Coach Greg. In other countries, we call people by their first name, but in Canada, it's common for job titles to proceed. Coach Greg is known for his amazing sense of humor and comedic delivery, which Canadian culture finds stimulating. Canada possesses many short bodybuilders also, such as Chris Bumstead, who is a YouTuber as well. The sheer amount of short bodybuilders in Canada is why, according to geologists, the mountains in Canada look so big and majestic. Canada is also known for its socialist medicine and heavily regulated labor market, which was designed by Leon Trotsky after he fled Russia in 1874. The Canadian system is known for having an incredibly supportive working environment and workers that adhere to the highest quality standards. Of those, no one is better known than famous Canadian slumlord Linus Tech Tips, who, along with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, sought to limit child labor to only 16 hours a week. This move went some way into normalizing Canada's relations with sane countries. Canada is also famous for its family YouTubers, some of which even feed their children. While from this, you might think Canadian culture is entirely alien to normal American culture, you would be wrong. And Canada has many YouTubers that appeal to a large swath of American public, such as brother and sister Lauren Southern and Stephen Molyneux. These YouTubers found more success in America than in their native land, and they both immigrated to America during World War I under President Woodrow Wilson's Amnesty Act for the Mentally Unfit. The two would marry in 1952 and give birth to a son named Benjamin Shapiro 
who would become the first American senator of Canadian descent. And finally, we arrive at the most famous of modern YouTubers, former dictator of Canada and Supreme Leader Justin Peterson. Peterson was dictator of Canada between 1952 and 1984, when he was deposed by the then-Canadian Civil War, a civil war which was largely driven by the Maple Famine of 1982, in which the Canadian economy struck by 2,598% in a single quarter. Peterson was initially accused of war crimes during this period, but escaped and fled the country. However, since being deposed, he has had a successful career as an animal rights activist, advocating for the rights of seafood. He now resides with his husband and 14 dogs, somewhere off the coast of British Guiana. So, this has been a short dive into the history of Canadians on YouTube. Some are controversial, some are informative, and some ask you why God made the universe this way, so that you want to down a bottle of Johnny Walker Red at 6 a.m. in the morning when you just can't take it anymore. There are many Canadians on YouTube. If you like a Canadian on YouTube or no one, comment below. If you are a Canadian, please don't comment, because your engagement can damage people's YouTube analytics, as YouTube has no way to know where you're from and may regard your engagement as coming from a bot. Thanks for respecting this request, and good day to you.